All right, time to get the stream on, get the Xbox on, and PC. I, I don't want to use this PC. Nah, we don't need this PC. Yeah. This, this is our streaming PC. So we're here to answer the question. Will this $160 Apogee M1K compute stick be able to stream not only your console games like PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series, or even be the streaming PC for your actual gaming PC? I'm gonna answer all of those questions in this video. Stick around, I'm gonna take you through the whole process. Me setting it up, showing you the actual stream, talking about what settings, and then we'll wrap up talking about my experience and if I recommend it. And we'll also talk about a couple of other products that I picked up to be able to help out this series. We are gonna do this as a series. I'm gonna continue testing out budget PCs because in today's technological kind of supply and demand craziness, you can't get graphics cards. You can barely get processors. But you can grab these things and mini PCs all over Amazon all day for a good price. And the question is, when you've already invested into your PS5, PS4, Xbox, Series, whatever the case, how much do you really want to spend to be able to get really good overlays sent to Twitch, to YouTube, Facebook, whatever the case? Let's get into it. First off, let's go over specs. This PC stick is rocking the J4125 Celeron processor, which has a boost of 2.6 gigahertz, but a base of 2.0. On board for my model has six gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, as well as 128 gigabytes of storage. This also has onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as a barrel port for power. Also on this unit is where you can install a micro SD to extend the storage, as well as two USB 3.0 ports. On the end of the device is actually the HDMI or the display out. And this also comes with an extension that is six inches long so that you can plug it into your TV and still have a little bit of room. This PC stick also has a fan to be able to help control the high temperatures, especially when you're running this four core, four thread processor to its limit. All right, so let's jump over and let's get this thing set up. I'm gonna show you all of my connections that I'm doing and everything before we actually get ready to stream. And after we finish the stream, we'll come back here and talk about the recommendations, what limitations there were, and do I recommend this for you and your situation? So the mini PC that we are using is the Apogee Compute Stick M1K and out of the box it comes with not only the mini PC itself but it also comes with an HDMI extension. I think it's maybe just six inches or so that you can plug it into your PC with. It comes with a barrel port for power. You can also put in an SD card or micro SD card. On the other side we have two USB 3.0 ports and I think that's about it for connectivity. We have HDMI on the front for us to be able to do display out. And for me to set this up for streaming, I actually used a RCA, this is just a USB 3.0 hub. And I plugged this into one of the USB 3.0 ports. And from here, I was able to run all of my cables. To capture the Xbox, we we're using the 4K mirror box. This is 4K pass through, USB 3.0. And I'm actually gonna do a full review on this. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the review on this. Fantastic capture card. We went ahead and plugged that in to one of the USB 3.0 ports on here. For my camera, we are using the Elgato Cam Link with the extension that comes with it. This Elgato Cam Link is um, connected to my Sony A5100. Goes into the other USB 3 port. And then I have a couple more. Not only am I plugging in the microphone, that is my Fifine K683A, but also my headphones, which is this cable. And I use all four ports to be able to set that up and stream off this mini PC. So right now I'm receiving all inputs from all of my capture cards, as well as I'm gonna run this to my display so that we can see this on the second display, get it set up and go streaming. 
Also to talk about a couple of the other pieces that I picked up for this series, this is the Mirabox 4K pass-through USB 3.0 capture. It does 1080p 60 FPS and the coloring is actually really good. I was not expecting it, but it does do pass-through 4K for what you're inputting and outputting, but it only captures 1080p and it is USB 3. Really impressed with this. We're gonna do a dedicated video specifically on this and talk about its limitations. If there are any, I haven't found anything yet other than there's no dedicated software, but definitely recommend this. I think it was like 40 bucks when I picked it up. Also picked up this Arctech touchpad keyboard combo. Now I have to say out of the pieces that we picked up for this series, this is my favorite because this is actually metal and the key typing is just really solid. I'm actually really impressed with how these keys feel and this touchpad's being really responsive with a left and right click as well as some navigation buttons with some volume control. It definitely comes with a USB plug for 2.4 gigahertz that you plug in to control. It's not Bluetooth, but it was like $23 that I picked it up for. And for someone who's gonna use like a PC stick or mini PC in their living room, this is a really good option because it's so thin that you could just hide it almost anywhere for you to be able to use it and it be out of the way. But when you need it, you've got a nice mouse and keyboard ready to go. All right, I've got everything set up. I did a test recording and a test stream, and before we do the official stream, this is actually blowing me away, not only on its quality, but how well it's working. My normal overlays that I use on stream, two capture cards, it's handling a USB microphone, my headset, and it's not skipping a beat. The only thing I'm seeing so far is when I do transitions, I don't have it on cut, but maybe fade. It does kind of drop FPS in between the transitions, but I'm not dropping anything on resolution. We're streaming at 720p 30 for this stream, and I recommend that for beginning streamers anyway, just because you don't get transcoding, and that 720 30 with a low bit rate is something that everyone can access. So this is actually a really good tool for someone who is starting out or even someone who's not just starting out, just someone who wants some uh, like a budget option. This thing's blowing me away. So I'm gonna go get changed, we're gonna get ready, and we're gonna get this stream going. <sighs> so we just finished up that stream and I have to tell you, I am thoroughly impressed. This little mini PC stick has completely exceeded any expectation that I ever would have had for it. Not only did it handle my entire stream through just chatting, gaming, uh, everything I could throw at it from transitions, it just, it did it from a form factor. Hold on, hold on, let me get my AirPods. Here's the mini PC, okay? Here's my AirPods. Look at the size. Look, just, just look at the, the, the size difference. It's this small and streamed my entire stream with no problem. Well, I can't say no problem. It was one hiccup and it had nothing to do with like the stability of my stream because I dropped zero frames. I had like 26 encoding frames dropped out of, you know, 400 and something thousand stream frames or something like that. And the only hiccup I had was when I actually hit transition and I had it set to fade in between the two scenes, there were times that it would drop FPS, but not necessarily frames. In OBS, you'll actually see that there's a little part in the stat window that says FPS and then also frame rendering time. And it would dip down to around the 20s whenever I transitioned, but I changed it to cut which just literally shifts directly to the next transition, and I had no problems. Do I think you can run a stinger? I don't think so. But if you're just on one scene anyway, and you just stay there, or you just have a couple, I don't see a problem. The other thing that blew me away was it not only ran the Mirabox USB capture for my Xbox beautifully, it also ran the Camlink 4K and captured both devices flawlessly. And I had no hiccups on stream, the quality, the color, everything looked great. I was able to put on a LUT as well on my camera and I was just thoroughly impressed. So the real question is, who do I recommend this for and do I recommend it? The quick answer is yes, I highly recommend this. Now, purchasing this compute stick was 160 bucks, got to my door in two days, 
and it already came set up with Windows 10 Pro. I actually didn't have to do any of the setup. It went straight to the OS. Some of you might want to reinstall it. I went ahead and went with it, tested it, benchmarked it and everything, I even played a couple of games on it. And I have to say, for the person who is a streamer who plays their Xbox, their PS4 in their living room, they don't have like a dedicated space. This is the perfect solution because it can plug into an HDMI port on the back of your TV. Literally, it just has the plug on the end. Just plug it in. Have all your cables set up. It's out of the way. No one notices it. When company comes over, they don't know that you have a PC neatly tucked behind your TV. But you can also have this at your desk set up like I did. I just had it here at my, my streaming setup. And it took up no room to use something like this. Now, who do I not recommend this for? Someone who already has like a gaming PC with any kind of newer graphics card the last four years, you have a hardware encoder built in. Most of you have already NVENC as well as even AMF if you're an AMD user. That hardware encoder is going to work better than this. There is no hardware encoding, so I was just using X264. And so I was almost maxing out the CPU the entire time. So if you have a graphics card that has a hardware encoder on it, those are going to be probably better options. And I would recommend you using those over something like this. But if you're a console gamer with no PC, you're looking to get a little bit more serious about your overlays, the things that you put on stream, $160 you can't go wrong with something like this. Not only that, it outputs 4K, so you can use this as for media, for a whole bunch of other things attached to your TV. Just think about the possibilities. And that'll wrap this video up, guys. Make sure you check out the description for the links for all of these items, including the mirror box, the keyboard, as well as this Apogee PC stick. If you wanna support the channel, purchase one of those from there. Otherwise, make sure you hit this with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications. Come check me out on Twitch, join our Discord, all of the normal things. And yeah, I'm Cyrus, and welcome to the darkness.